Welcome back everybody. This is Chainsaw Carving for Beginners by a Beginner. I'm your beginner, BJ Raymer with Glowing Jacks. Hopefully you've been able to see my channel and some of my videos. Today is the one year anniversary since I've been chainsaw carving. Uh, around this time last year, I saw somebody on Facebook make a pumpkin. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. And me being a chainsaw guy and liking chainsaws and having lots of chainsaws of my own, I was thinking, you know what, I can do that. And that's where it all started for me. Started making pumpkins, started, you know, researching the, the tools, the techniques, what, you know, the patterns, uh, converting over to a quarter pitch chain, uh, getting this equipment, that equipment, this may help you, that may help you. And that's what today's episode is going to be. It's going to be a three part video. Uh, we're going to go over, you know, the thing, the questions that everybody has on the Facebook pages, on the forums, uh, the things that I can think of, the most common things I can think of. And this episode is going to be about saws, bars, and chains. That's what everybody wants to know first. Tell you a little bit about me. If you haven't done, uh, if you haven't gone to my channel, I recommend you go to my channel. Go ahead and subscribe. You'll see, be able to catch the next uh, two parts of the video. Uh, go ahead and like if you like. If you see something you like, go ahead and tell me you liked it. That way I can continue down that path to give you things that you like. If you didn't like something, go ahead and tell me that. That way I can change a few things. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, real quick intro on me. My first job, I'm a firefighter in my local area. That's my main job. Two, if you've gone to my channel, you see that I sell pumpkins. Me and my family do that every year. That's one of the things that we've been doing for quite a few years. And three, chainsaw car. That's pretty much all you need to know about me. Uh, got into it, loved it. I'm interested into it. I welcome you because I, this is gonna be exciting for you. I know you probably may feel overwhelmed. I'm gonna try to catch you up on the things I, I, hopefully this just helps you. That's all. It's, it, I know I've seen all the questions out there and I try to answer them as best as I can when I'm in those forums or if I'm on that page. Uh, maybe this will kind of give you a broad spectrum. So just stay with me and we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to be messing with my camera. I'm going to be looking at my computer over here. We're going to be doing all kinds of different things. So that's my intro. Let's, uh, let's jump into it. I'm going to stop you for a second. We're going to be right back. All right. So the first thing we're gonna go over today is uh, a lot of people wanna start with chainsaws and it's that very most controversial question, what saw should I get to chainsaw carve? We're not gonna jump into that one just yet. Give me two seconds. We're gonna do this disclaimer thing. You know, let's not go that far yet. Let's start thinking about your safety with your chainsaws. Things I'm gonna recommend, I'm not gonna dive too deep. You're gonna have to use your common sense when it comes to chainsaw and chainsaw carving. I never got in trouble with chainsaw carving or with chain, I'm sorry, with chainsaws at all until I started chainsaw carving. Okay, first thing you need to have, you need to get you some gloves. These are thin, I like the dexterity of them. I can move my fingers, but they also have a grip and they don't slide around. These are like a neoprene type, thin, elastic. Gloves, you need to have gloves on. They really do help. Some type of ear protection. You do not want to go deaf because you're gonna be running chainsaws a lot. Some type of eye protection, you may be thinking, you know what, I don't wanna wear those because they interfere with what I see. I get stuff on my face and debris. Well, if you're getting stuff on your face and you're getting debris on your face, that are things that could go into your eyes. So please pay attention to that, it's very important. Even with glasses on, you are gonna get sawdust in your eyes and it irritates them, it hurts, you can scratch them. It's just not good. Last thing I'm gonna talk about, you need to have good shoes on, chainsaw chaps. Uh, I, like I said, I never got into trouble with uh, chainsawing before. I've never wore chaps before. I only decided to get them when I started chainsawing. Uh, my quick story, you can see, I do have a couple tears and stuff where I've nicked my legs. Uh, with chainsaw carving, you may have a shorter bar on your chain, and I'm a short guy anyway, so that's why I never had too much of a problem, you know. But I can see now where tall people are using long, you know, shorter bars, they may come down and hit your leg. You may be tired one day, and you're not thinking, and you come down and you cut through real quick and the saw drops and your arms are tired and bam, you snag your leg. And that's what happened to me that made me a believer in chainsaw chaps uh, is that I came down quick, barely nicked my leg. I didn't cut it or anything, but I had jeans on, thank goodness. And you know, I was like, all right, that was the eye awakening moment. It's like, yeah, let's go ahead and invest. Invest in my safety, that way I can keep doing this. That's all I wanna say about safety gear. You should know you need to be safe. You should know chainsaws are dangerous and they can hurt you if you're not careful. All right, well, let's start it. I haven't got my computer set up. That way we can go over these main questions at least that I know. What chainsaw, what chainsaw should I get? 
Uh, you've probably seen this in the forums. Now I'm gonna tell you a quick disclaimer here as well. I'm not sponsored by anybody. These chainsaws I have, and this is what's gonna depend on this question. It's a loaded question. And I don't think people realize it's a loaded question because the things that I'm that I would try to tell people about this question, I'm gonna pull chainsaws over here in a second. Don't think about my brands that I have. And this is the reason why I'm gonna tell you. Uh, your location is gonna depend a lot on what specific model chainsaw you have. There are, you may live in town or in a city where you have noise ordinances or you may live in a subdivision that, you know what, after about two or three days of you running a chainsaw nonstop, they ain't gonna like you no more. <laughs> you are not gonna have happy neighbors. And this is, a, chainsaw carving is a, you know, it's an art form, it's a fun activity, it, at least it is for me. Uh, you don't want to be that nuisance, okay? You may have to go to an electric chainsaw, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I can't, I can't recommend, you know, what type of electric. Sorry, I'm messing with my camera. I can't recommend what type of electric chainsaw. I don't use them yet, and I'm thinking about getting one, but I don't use them. I don't use battery. I use all gas. Uh, so that's gonna depend. That's gonna be your number one factor. Are you in a place where you can run a gas saw to get into certain models, or do you need to be going towards an electric side? Uh, that'd be one thing I would be thinking about off the top of my head. Which model am I going to go for? Next thing, uh, we're not going to talk about brands because, and this this one will uh, brands. I mean, you jump in there and say, "Hey, what brand of chainsaw should I get?" In any of these forums, you're going to have ten dudes or gals sitting there wanting to fight you over which brand you're going to use. Brands on chainsaws. Let me tell you, and some people are going to hate me for this. Every model every manufacturer makes a good chainsaw at least they have at least one good model of chainsaw or they would not keep on making chainsaws and there's people out there that like every manufacturer okay some manufacturers have good models some have bad models and it don't matter if it's the most popular orange blue yellow purple chainsaw out there it doesn't matter you have good good models and you have bad models and i think that's something we can all agree if everybody's going to be honest and we want to try to find the best models out there to keep doing them so people have good luck with their saws and they keep on going. And I'm not gonna recommend any specific models today. I'm not gonna recommend any brands. I don't want you caught up into the brand world or you have to have this saw to do this thing. No, not at all. The, the best thing I can tell you is the model I would recommend, one that's easily available in your area if you are gonna be buying new, this is gonna kind of go towards, uh, I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but these are things that need to be explained. Uh, you know, if you're a chainsaw guy, you obviously know what brands you like. You just haven't carved before and you're looking for info on carving, right? So you already know what brands you like. You already know what brands you're gonna go for. Maybe it's uh, because your dad used them or your family uses them, or you just like them. Somebody recommended them, you started using it, you love that saw. So you stay with those brands. Uh, I try not to get caught up in brands. I try to get caught up in models. What works? What doesn't work? Uh, what's one chainsaw may not be good for another scenario. Okay, it's just the way it is. Some some people stay specifically with one brand. Some people, vice versa. I'm a vice versa guy. Whatever's available and works, and I can make it work, and I can find the parts. And there's a service place nearby. If in case I have an emergency that I need to go run and get a part, those are the things that I think about when it comes to picking out which models. Is it available locally? Is it are parts available locally for me? It, is there a mom and pop shop that sells a specific brand? That's where I would be looking first. I would be going to your local dealers, your local mom and pop shops. I try to stay away from the big stores because they're going to have a, a few models. They're not going to have parts. They're not going to have people that can help you. Uh, I would try to find that mom and pop chainsaw shop that uh, that you know they sell maybe a specific model, whatever whatever brand it is. You know, and start going there, look at the brand, the models that they have, ask them what models they can get, and start researching those models. Start seeing, you know, can I use this chainsaw, you know, as a carving saw later on? Can I put different bars on it? Can I get parts in for it? Can you get certain chains? You know, find out. Talk to these people and use them as a resource and as a guide. Uh, you know, I know I'm not showing you very much right now, but these are things that you need to be thinking about that because like I said, it's a loaded question. You know, it's not, I don't think it's about brands. I think it's about what's easier for you. If you're trying to get a hold of a model that's in a certain brand that's, you know, it's gonna take you two hours to drive to get to that store that may have that part 
with guys that don't know what they're talking about or you can get this model and brand that it may be reliable that's uh you know 15 minutes down the road you know that i'm just telling you don't get hung up on brands and models and things like that you need to find what's available what is uh cost effective what is with parts with everything you know uh is it going to fit your needs in the future and then we'll kind of get into some other things on those here in a minute i think i've covered you know a lot of the the big main points i'm going to i'm going to scan down my computer real quick because i had some more points i wanted to make all right we are going to talk about a few different things on the chainsaws and then we'll kind of swap over to the bars like i said it's going to be a longer video i'm sorry now i'm going to pull brands over here what works for me may not work for you these are off my own research these are off my own budget these are off of uh things that i've researched and saw and what's available to me you know these saws may not be available to you locally these were available to me i want to make that a big a big point nobody sponsors me nobody sends me saws not yet anyways <laughs> oh god it's been i got off shift this morning it's early and i got a lot of things to do today anyways i'm having fun with it now i'm ready to go coffee's kicking in coffee's kicking in all right i already told you i'm a researcher if you already got to this far in the rabbit hole of chainsaw carving keep on researching you know look at the models that people are carving with we're going to keep on going a little bit i am going to pull one thing over to you i'm going to give you some of my recommend recommendations and it's not on the brands it's not brands so don't, don't worry about this brand i'm not telling you about what this brand chainsaw is it's a ms-170 very common yes i know a lot of people use it some people hate it whatever your thoughts are your thoughts if you got negative thoughts about what i use keep them to yourselves uh if you have positive thoughts you can tell your positive stories let's just be nice and kind to everybody that's all i'm going to say about that just be nice and kind everybody has their own opinions i know and like i said it just is what it is on brands i i can't go over it go over every little detail with you i pulled this one over like this chainsaw what i'm going to tell you it came with a regular bar right now it has a 12 inch dime tip with a quarter pitch chain and when i say a regular bar unless i'm saying like the regular manufactured uh standard bar uh when you start getting looking at your bars and well i'm just pulling this big and over just to show you the different tips of the bar you can see like this is an aftermarket bar but this is like the size and shape of a of a regular bar and just to show you for reference that's what most of your chainsaws are going to come on you're not going to see unless somehow you got a hold of a specialized carving saw off the internet somewhere uh you're not going to see a lot of those inside the stores uh, a lot of mom and pop shops they don't know about chainsaw carving very much you're going to have to do your own research you're going to have to find your own parts of the things that part numbers of the things you want then go try to explain it that has been very difficult at the on this video i forgot to tell you i forgot to tell you i am going to be putting websites where i found things uh, i'm going to be putting uh, uh resources and reference material of websites some of them are from the uk that i've had good information off of i'm going to put them on all three videos so you can reference them you'll find them on all three videos if i have websites where i buy things and they don't sponsor me hopefully they're okay with me putting it out there and uh you know i'm just going to share the information as much information with you where i found things where you can find things uh, I'm not going to say the brands and stuff on here. I don't want some people to get upset. They're like, how hey, you didn't say my store. I'm sorry. I just haven't heard about it or found, found out about it. Like I said, it's my first year. So if you've got a good store or something like that, they're like, hey, man, these parts are cheap. These are mom and pops. And that's what I try to go for. I try to go for the small companies that sell things. They're quick, you know, uh, things like that. But anyways, we're gonna, I'll, I'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. I keep resetting my, my camera. That way I can see myself. Back to what I was talking about on these chainsaws and I'll, when you get your chainsaw, whether it's one you borrowed, whether it's one you had, whether it's one you're going to go out and buy new, whether it's a cheap one, expensive one, I see the story of, you know, I understand the, well, you want to buy good stuff, you know, the, the comments people are like, well, you want to buy good brands and good stuff and good models for the fact that way they'll last longer. I understand, you know, I understand that, that theory, that, uh, that approach when it comes to buying equipment. I also understand the approach of uh, with your guy or girl and you, and you just may not have the extra money to go do that, you know, and that's, that's not, I'm not saying that's where I am, but I can't, you know, having a family and having other obligations and responsibilities, I can't go out and, 
you know, drop a thousand dollars on tools and equipment in one day and just start doing something without getting some eyebrows from my significant other. You know what I'm saying? She'd be, she'd be kind of upset if I did all that to her. So I'm trying not to do that. I'm working my way forward. And that's just where I started. Most, and another miss, miss so we're kind of, we're still on the saw subject, but we're gonna get ready to get, kind of move over to the bars, you know, get into that aspect. So now you got your chainsaw, you found the brand you want, you acquired it, whether you borrowed it, uh, a good running chainsaw is what you need. If you're, if you've already had chainsaws and you're a chainsaw runner, like how I was, I already had them, rebuilt them, worked them, used them, loved them, excited about them, whatever. You already know a bunch of aspects. If you're brand new to chainsaws and you just got your first chainsaw and it's your first time ever using one, I suggest you don't start chainsaw carving with that chainsaw. I suggest you find a place you can go practice for a while with that chainsaw, get used to it, learn how to take the chain off, learn how to, you know, buy you a couple extra chains. That way you can either learn how to start sharpening it on one of them and then you have chains to swap out or you start, you find that mom and pop shop that can sharpen your chains because uh, you're going to need to know those type of things. You're going to need to know how to replace uh, spark plugs, uh, replace uh, air filters or, or air cleaners, and you're going to know how to mix your gas if you're using a gas saw, like, you know, your oil and gas ratio. Make that sure you do that. It's very important. A lot of people blow up saws because they put regular gas in them. It's a two-stroke mix. You'll need to know what your chainsaw takes. You'll have to need to read that manual that comes with your chainsaw if you just bought a brand new chainsaw. I'm not gonna go into a lot of that because those are there's too many other videos for that on how to maintenance your chainsaws, how to take care of them. But it does, read your manuals. They do have a lot of information on what type of gas, what octane of gas, uh, what type of oils to use in them to keep them running. They want you to keep them running. Let's just say it that way. They don't want a bad rep for the most part. And let's say it wants you to just go through parts. We'll get into that later. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So you're gonna have, you're gonna find your chainsaw and could look like this, could look like something else, but it's gonna have a regular bar on it. That's what it's gonna come with, unless you already have chainsaw and you're setting up for carving. It's gonna have a regular bar on it. I suggest you use this the way it is for a good while. You know, get really used to running your chainsaw, to maintaining your chainsaw, to cleaning it, to taking the bar on and off, getting to know your piece of equipment. You know, that's very important because you're gonna have this thing in your hands for a long time and you don't want to be carving and having problems and don't know how to fix them. You know, like, hey, uh, it shut off. Well, why did it shut off? Are you out of gas? Or, hey, my bar is smoking. Well, why did? Why is your bar smoking? Did you did not fill it up with a uh, bar oil? You know, so things like that. Learn how to do certain cuts because you're going to have to cut a lot of your own wood. And that's going to be part two. We're going to go into tools and wood on part two. So we're getting, we're, we'll get to that subject too. But that's what I'm gonna recommend. Use your chainsaw for a little bit before you start carving. Get used to it, get used to the loudness, get used to wearing the safety equipment. You know, give yourself some time, give yourself some few days, okay? That that would really push you a little bit further ahead of the game instead of getting this brand new chainsaw, having a log in front of you that you did not cut and saying, all right, what now? And then not knowing about how the bar will kick back and how not knowing about which way to cut and not knowing how tight to keep your chain. You know, these are things that I would recommend that you do and learn as you go. You know, this is, you'll learn more as you go and you'll get more comfortable, but that's just my recommendation. All right, so I'm resetting my camera again, sorry. All right, next thing, we're gonna jump over into bars. So I hopefully I explained chainsaws a little bit. Sorry I didn't go over into brands. I am gonna make a few recommendations after I get through the bars and the chains. All right, gonna make some recommendations. You may like them, you may not. Can't help you with that. Just keep watching. I'll get some rec recommendations about what type of chainsaws to look for, things like that. All right, going into bars. We already talked about it. you're gonna have a standard bar. Get used to using it. Get out there with it. Now the next thing, <laughs> people have questions. You'll see a lot of people when they start like, hey, do I need a chainsaw carving bar? This answer is loaded as well. I just went to uh, the Block Bash over in French Lick, Indiana, and you would be surprised, and there was pros, they had at least 10 pros out there. All of them were using medium-sized saws with uh, regular bars on them. They made, some of them make, and they all had extra saws, don't get me wrong, but the majority of their work was going on with chainsaws and regular bars, okay? If you can learn how to start cutting things with regular bars, first, getting your big sections off, 
you know, doing a little bit of stuff. Watch how you're using your bar and how it's cutting. You know, go easy, go slow. Start figuring out how it works. It's gonna help you a lot more. I wish I would have done that because I've used chainsaws, but I went to the mind frame of thinking that, oh man, I have to get me a detailing bar or a dime tip or a quarter tip. And I'm gonna show you that right now on this chainsaw. So with this manufacturer, I know you all know what it is. Sorry, I told you, it's a steel MS-170. This manufacturer does have a kit that comes with, it, that you can order through them to get a steel dime tip bar and it comes with a chain. And it also comes with, I'm just gonna take this stuff over, with a spur sprocket to change it over to the quarter pitch chain. Okay, chains on bars, most of the time they come in like a 3 8 low pro, low profile chain. And I'm gonna put the re resources and the reference websites on there and these will give you more detail like a Canon Bar, that's one of them, cannonbar.com, they give you a lot of things as a lot of references on there. I'm not recommending Canon Bar. I do have Canon Bar. I'm not recommending brands. I'm just telling you they have a lot of references and resources. I like my Canon Bar, but anyways, <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like I don't like it because I do like it. But anyways, that's what you're going to get into once you start start swapping over thinking that you want a dime tip or a carving bar. And that's what this is right here. This is the dime tip. See how it has the small dime tip. And the question is, you know, you can figure out what a dime tip easily, but the questions are, is, well, how do I convert over to a quarter pitch chain? Okay, finding those parts to convert over to a quarter pitch chain. And that's where it gets very important. If you have those mom and pop shops and you have somebody that knows a little bit about something, that's who you're gonna use now. You're gonna go back to that mom and pop shop and be like, hey, I got this chainsaw, I love it. Don't love it, whatever you tell. Now, I'm not saying the chain, your chainsaw. And you say, hey, I want to convert this over to a quarter pitch chain. Can you help me find this? Or can you help me find this part number? And most of the time they can, you know, like this setup, fortunately it came with a kit. Now I had to explain to the dude, like, hey, this is the part number. I found it. I know you have it. Well, can you order it for me? I had to do that to my mom and pop shop near me because they didn't know anything about carving, you know, because it's not very, it's not very big in this area. But that's what this is. That's what you'll learn is to find, you're gonna be taking this section off and it's pretty easy to do. You just have a, uh, on most chainsaws anyways. You're gonna be swapping out the sprocket and that's what that is right there. This is gonna determine what size chain you can run on your chainsaws. I know this video is getting long, but it's very prevalent to know these type of things. Uh, that's what's gonna be determining what chain you can run, what pitch of chain you can run. like. This is a quarter pitch chain. It's a whole lot smaller. The teeth are smaller. Everything's smaller about it. So that way you can make a little bit more defined cuts. That's what people are used, why they use the dime tips. They use them for more uh, smaller carvings. Uh, you know, especially short bars. Use them for more detailing. Things that you don't need a big cut for or a big wide cut on the, uh, on the bar itself or, uh, you know, very aggressive. These are more detailed oriented. They're more uh, for the smaller things. So uh, that's kind of, if you're starting to look for the swapping over to where quarter pitch, that's where it can get hairy and dicey for the simple fact of uh, trying to locate down the stuff to reference over to swap it over for a quarter pitch. Uh, some chainsaws, it's easy to find the things. And I say some chainsaws, I'm saying like, if you do go towards a bigger manufacturer, you know, like the main ones, we all know what the main ones are, it is easier to find some things more for them. But don't let that get discouraged because a lot of these other manufacturers, the smaller ones, do have the same bar mounts. And this is what I'm talking about, like the bar mounts. Some of them are universal. Uh, so you can find a lot of bars that will fit on certain types of chainsaw. You And that's one thing you will need to know. It's like when you start swapping over to a core pitch, is this setup going to work on my saw, you know, and then you have them all blended together. So you're going to be trying to find for whatever model saw you have to run a quarter pitch chain. You're going to be trying to find, you know, your sprocket, whether it's going to be a rim or a spur. This one is a spur. Okay. Hopefully you can see that this one's a spur drive. And then they also have the rim drive. Your chainsaw may come with the little rims. If you look at it, it slides on and off. Uh, that sometimes make it easier, sometimes it can make it harder. 
and you'll have to start looking up like hey i have this chainsaw i want to convert it over to quarter pitch chain and run a quarter pitch bar which that's what these are and we do that because it you can be a little bit more detail oriented you can get into some smaller bars you can get into some smaller cuts for details and things like that so it's pretty much a lot of i'm not gonna say a lot of research because i'm gonna give you some references on these websites i've done a lot of research myself already i'm going to recommend you i'm going to tell you real quick before we get into which chainsaws i kind of recommend that you kind of steer towards for, for beginner guys so uh all right we're going to go to the shop section first uh one of the shops that i kind of recommend i want to tell you to go to uh saw nuts s-a-w-n-u-t-s i'll have the link down in the description below uh that's written by bob and cindy king they are some good folks i've ordered a bunch of stuff through them and they have a lot and their page is specifically set up for chainsaw carvers you're going to see tools on there you're going to see chains on there uh you're going to see a little bit of everything on there are they going to have everything no uh, but they're going to have a lot of things that can get you in the right spot they sell bars they sell chains uh some are very comparable some you may be thinking that's still out of my price range so you may have to try to look at something else but they they ship really well they've been really nice to me they emailed me and stuff like that so i've been very happy with them i'm going to tell you another one is bailey's uh bailey's online it's a chainsaw store they do a little bit of everything from forestry all the way down to carving they have carving stuff there i've used them a couple times they you know sometimes i get their their website isn't as easy or dedicated to chainsaw chainsaw carvers but they have that the, they have, they're gonna have most likely have the products there whether or not you buy from them you can at least use them as a reference to start looking at certain things and then order from them if you like or go somewhere else uh, another part place I use a lot for chainsaw parts and stuff is called saw again uh, s-a-w-a-g-a-i-n dot com saw again they're a small shop as well I believe I don't know how big they are but they don't take phone calls a lot if you do you gotta leave a message and most time they go through email and they've started they've started really beefing up on their you can get a lot of saw parts i've ordered saw parts to rebuild chainsaws through them and uh they're always they always ship well i haven't had any problems with them uh they're getting into the chainsaw carving aspect a little bit more they have a lot of setups it seems like a lot of people is using them because they run out so those are three i'll have them down below you can check them out so we've kind of gone over a few things about the saw just to keep on moving forward because it's already a long video but there's just so much information it's that hopefully it helps you out a little bit <sighs> we've talked about a few bars i do recommend trying to stay with that regular bar setup as long as possible until you're like man i just i just want to try a carving bar because you're going to hit that point i just want to try a carving bar uh there's several manufacturers try to find what's in your price range make sure it will mount up to your chainsaw okay if you're wanting to run quarter pitch you're gonna have to swap over you're gonna have to swap over your drive sprocket it's either gonna be a rim or spur drive you're gonna have to make sure that fits onto your chainsaw you know make sure you have the right model the right part to go on there some of the mom and pops may be able to find it you may have to find it off the internet but you'll have to dig in then you're gonna have to make sure you have the the right bar that will go onto your chainsaw and then you're gonna have to make sure you have the right, the right, you're gonna have to make sure everything's right. That way it runs right for you, all right? Like this is a, uh, I have this in a 50 gauge and that 50 gauge means like the, the width of these drive links at the bottom of these drives, okay? That's the width of those. Some of them come in at 0.43, some come in to 0.50. You gotta make sure you have the right one for the right bar and the right quarter pitch drive length or sprocket drive the sprocket whether it's a rim or spur you have to make sure all those things are right and not having them right you're going to have problems you're going to have things that jump there are different now we're going to kind of get away from this there are different types of carving saw maybe you don't want to go that detailed maybe you want to jump into something that's like i don't think i'm ready for a dime tip because with dime tips comes other things you know you need to run them looser or you're going to burn up your saw you may have to swap oils a little bit because you're the viscosity viscosity i think i said it right of the chainsaw regular bars oil is a little too is a little too thick and so you're like seeing them smoke and stuff you know you these are more in-depth things you're just gonna have to try to figure out and learn i'm trying to get you on the right path you know this is a uh, quarter tip 
it's also running quarter pitch so what i had to do with it i had to get it this one had a rim this one had a uh, rim drive sprocket so i had to swap out that sprocket i found the bar that correlated to the chainsaw model that i have and also i uh this is a canon bar i went to their website they have it very easy to find bars so that you can reference that it kind of gives you a little bit of a bar mount guide and things like that and they have a lot of good references on there i would very recommend highly recommend you check that out and I, i'll have that link on my on my description as well and then also you know i got my my chains i think i ordered them through bob king uh on saw nuts and i'm going to tell you about the chainsaw chains real quick and i'm not going to touch much on them and then we'll kind of talk about some cc's and stuff on chainsaws and wrap this video up because it's already getting to be a long video god bless it's all like 20 minutes all right Maybe I should have broke this up even more. I know. I know. Anyways, chainsaw chains. We're going to talk about that. If you swap over to the chainsaw, you know, the quarter pitch chains, there's uh, a big factor that you really need to know. And you may not be able to see it on here. But these chainsaw, these chainsaw cutters on the back end have been shaved down in a certain angle. And you can just, I hate to say you keep researching. But it's hard for me to show you this physically you can buy chainsaw chains for carving or you can grind them down on your own bob king's website saw nuts bailey's saw again they all sell spe specified carving chains and why you would want that when you students start swapping over to the carving bars is when this tip goes in if you do not have the profile if you do not have the profile of the back half of your cutter I'm trying to get it right there. If it is not slanted at a certain angle, you're gonna get a lot of jumpiness, okay? It's gonna be a lot of beating. This chain is going to back half of that chain that's going on to this narrow tip is going to be beating into the wood and you're not gonna get a clean cut. It's not gonna feel right. It's gonna be choppy. You're gonna have choppy cuts. You're not, you're not gonna be happy. Hey, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> I wish I would've known that. So that's an important tip. Uh, try to find carving chains if you can. I know some of the dealers will sell them, but you need to have your part numbers ready. And I'm sorry I don't have part numbers for every manufactured chain and stuff like that. It's uh, very, very hard to do. I'm just trying to give you the resources to get to those areas where you can help find some of the things. Hopefully that helps. All right, we're gonna break away from the saws. I gave you my thoughts on the saws. I've explained a little bit on how to get to your quarter pitch. You know, if you want to go to a carving bar, I recommend staying with your regular bar setup. Learn how to use it. Most time you're going to be in the 3 8 low profile, which is a good smooth chain. Uh, when you are cutting, uh, we'll do some more techniques and stuff in the part three. I think we're going to hit that in part three, uh, doing like techniques with your chainsaw. I'm just trying to give you an overall guide. Number one question, what chainsaw do I use? And uh, until I got several different chainsaws here. I'm resetting my camera again. That way I can see myself. I got several chainsaws here. I know this is going into 30 minutes. I have this starting off, you don't have to do this. But I was a chainsaw guy, so I set my setup like this. Okay. I have a small chainsaw. This is a 30cc chainsaw. CC is the measurement of the power of the chainsaw. It's cubic it's cubic centimeters. Uh, just that's what CC means cubic centimeters it's the measurement of power the higher the CC the more powerful the saw uh, the higher the CC you're gonna get into bigger saws heavier saws so on recommendations on what I have I have a 30 CC saw I have and this one does my small carvings uh, it does my you know my smaller carvings my smaller pieces of wood uh, you know nothing really too big fancy you know, if I had my regular bar on it, I would probably, which comes, you know, I think it's a 16 inch bar. You can get a 16 or 14 used to, now that I think they just went to 16. Uh, you know, you can go towards a little bit bigger pieces of wood. You know, I'd say maybe like 14 to 16, somewhere in there. You can probably go big as you want, it's just gonna take you longer. You know, and it may be harder on your saw because you're gonna be using higher RPMs for a longer period of time to get through that piece of wood. So, I have my smaller saw. For my smaller stuff and for my detail work because i do have a carving bar on this one but don't think it would bother me to have a regular bar on there and use it for my smaller stuff for a lot longer period of time because 
I should have done that. I should have not chased over to the, uh, I had to have the carving bar setup ideal. It does help. It does help on certain things. Certain things, but you're gonna see a lot of cats out there that are running regular bars, carving up, but it's gonna fit your style. It's gonna fit your profile. It's gonna fit what you want to do. So I don't think you can do whatever, okay? There are no rules in chainsaw carving. There's no Bible or book on chainsaw carving. Some people have made books on chainsaw carving, but there's no, there's no big, big elaboration of what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Don't tell people, don't let people tell you what you have to do with chainsaw carving. You do whatever you want. This is your art. This is your game. This is your hobby. This is what you like to do. If it works for you, you do it. Okay? If you take anything else out of that, you could say all my stuff is bull crap. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to tell you? Go for it. I hope it works out for you. I can't wait to see what you make. Okay? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you. Because this is... Don't get caught up into the, the arguments if you got to do this and that. Some things help. Some things don't. Some things help for people on one side of the country that won't help you. Some things that you do won't help them. Okay? There's no rules. All right? No rules of chainsaw carving. Use whatever you want. I uh, just... That's my two cents. Anyways, my setup again. I have the smaller MS-170. It's a 30cc saw. I use it for the small things. Now, I do have a 50cc saw. This is the Echo 501. Uh, I have it with a 14-inch quarter tip bar. I use this saw for more blocking out. These are for my bigger, you know, bigger CCs. That's what I'm explaining to you, not brands. CCs. <laughs> Power of the saw. Lower CC saws, I'm using those for smaller things. This is kind of in the middle. This is a 50cc saw. I'm using this for my middle things, you know, middle size things. I'm blocking out with this. I'm removing bigger pieces of material. I ha I don't have the, the small detail detailing bar, which I could detail with this if I wanted to a little bit or up to my skill and comfort level. But that's what, that's what I use that saw for. Now I do have a bigger saw. And this is the biggest saw I have at the moment until Boo Bear, whatever. She, I can't let her know that I get a lot of saws. She may get mad, but she likes me. Anyways, this is my uh, my 590. It's a 60 cc saw. It's 60 cc's. As you can tell, it's bigger. Has a bigger bar. It's this 20 inch bar. This is aftermarket bar. I just put this on. I haven't even tested this bar out yet. I bent my other one on some big logs, and uh, which is fine. You know, sometimes that happens. That was my mistake. My my silliness. Keep on going. Anyways, so I got a different bar on it. But anyways, what I, my, my point is, is 60 cc's, you can really block out some bigger pieces. You know, you can really cut some bigger woods if you're out trying to get some bigger logs. Uh, yeah, just kind of think of it that way. That was what, gonna be my recommendation here at the end. We just kind of just went over it. And I'm gonna try to wrap this up because man, we're getting into some, some time. I've already lost your level. Hopefully you're still with me. We've talked about swapping over to the quarter pitch. Uh, I've showed you my setups on what I have. This is just a regular bar. This isn't a carving bar or anything. I do have this in the semi-chisel chain. Check out the differences of those. Have your full chisel, semi-chisel. That's a whole different rabbit hole of people, what people like and what people do with them, all right? I have gone to semi-chisel on this. It's worked better for me. So if you wanna know my re recommendation on that, I'm able to do bore cuts. You'll find out about that. You'll find about you should be finding out about that if you're going to be cutting big pieces of wood and stuff like that. Uh, uh, we talked about carving chains. Look into that. If you because if you're putting regular chains on your carving bars, you're going to have problems. Uh, all right. So we have rec so that's what I, I'm going. Now we're going to make my recommendations. We're getting to that part. We're getting ready to wrap up this. It's getting the long. It's going to take me forever out here in the country to upload this video. Anyways recommendations if uh has and when i first started this video we talked about you're either a chainsaw guy or, gr or girl or you're not uh you already know what saws you're going to be using to start off chainsaw carving if you're not very familiar i would look for da -da -da -da. i'm not saying the ms-170 if you're saying i was going to say that i'm not saying it's still ms-170 i'm not i'm not recommending any brands recommending cc's that's exactly what i'm recommending because remember what i said earlier it all depends on where you live what you can get a hook to who sells what next to you uh if you're going to be in a city going to be in the country if you can get a hook to it or not can get parts or not if you already have one or not 
a chainsaw that runs is going to be better than a chainsaw that you don't have okay if you got a chainsaw in your garage and if it runs chains are sharp go use it all right i don't care what brand it is make sure it's in good shape i would use something da, 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 in the 25 i'm at right now the 25 to 40 cc range some of you may be thinking wow that's a big spectrum and it is because that kind of converts over to uh chains people that have chainsaws and people that don't have chainsaws and in that 25 to 40 cc range that's where you're going to find a lot of consumer saws saws that are at your big box stores that you may have already purchased in the past because that tree went down last year in a snowstorm or a tornado or whatever all right you might you may have something bigger you can attend if you're used to a bigger saw i mean try it see if it works fake it till you make it go for it uh people that don't have chainsaws you know i, I do say the 25 to 40 if you if you go towards the 25 side the cc you're gonna have you're not gonna have as much power your chain speed may not be as quick it may be a safer i don't want to really say safer and give you that false sense of safetyness okay but you're not going to have as much kickback if the saw is going to be lighter it's going to, you would be able to uh you know because not everybody is just out here picking up logs and chainsaws and you know it, it may help you out to have a lighter saw i'm getting ready to think about getting a lighter saw myself because sometimes my arms get tired after eight hours of carving or whatever so uh that's why i say that 25 to 40 is going to get you a good saw that can be manageable uh you know it's very common size if you go towards 25 size you're going to be a little underpowered but it should be lighter it should be something that's going to be smaller you may be more comfortable with it if it's uh something that you're more nervous about uh up to the 40s you you know it will be a little bit beefier you may but you'll be able to go towards a little bit more bigger logs and bigger woods and the harder woods you know and it may help you out cutting bigger woods you know it may be a little bit more universal but you're going to suf suffer on the size you're going to have a bigger bar uh you may be getting up into like a i'm fine with the 3.25 chains you know doing some carving with them but if you're going into a solid 3h chain look that up as well 3h chain on sizes there's just a bigger size chain with bigger size bars i i doubt you will find a 3h chain on anything 40 cc's those are up to like I think 50 cc's and up maybe 55 cc's and up but uh it may be a little bit more cumbersome it'll be heavier it'll be a little bit bigger so it may not fit your needs to go all the way up there unless you're just you know big dude gal that's tall it's like man i'm using this chainsaw it's fine i love it it's what i already have cool go for it you know you already have it go for it uh also uh just kind of give you cc's i had wrote down yeah i already did say it. i, I 25 to 40s you're going to be lighter less power smaller pro smaller projects smaller blocking a little bit more for detail if you're going to go up to 40 to 60 you're looking at medium size saws you're going to be doing medium size logs medium size blocking uh not as much detail some people can i mean some guys are some guys and gals are really good at it you know so i mean it just depends on your skill level what you can do uh if you go over 60 cc's that's this one is a 60 you're looking at big logs <laughs> big weight big everything okay and guys are out there doing it got i keep saying guys guys and gals out there are doing it and they are you know they're doing good at it you know maybe that's the only chainsaw they have available to them they can't go out and get another one if you're comfortable with it go for it now, i'm not gonna tell you not to do it there, like i said earlier there's no rules all right we're gonna wrap this up let me tell you what you're gonna be able to find on on here go down to my description i want to give you at least three or four websites that i go from i apologize if yours isn't on there i haven't met you i haven't used you i haven't found you yet if you got all this stuff that i'm talking about like hey man i can help you out just come to my website let me know email me and i will check you out i'm going to check you out first before i start saying that hey i really like the site email me it's on my channel go to my about part and you can come down and email me and say hey i got this i have a saw store and you know come check me out see my prices see what i can do and i'll do that no problem i'm i'm for it a new place for me to shop is if i can save money if it helps me it helps me with what i'm doing i'm for it like i said i'm a beginner i'm a nobody this is these are things that i uh, hopefully i covered if i didn't i would put it down in the comment and be like hey explain this a little bit more explain it in the next video because it's going to be a couple days before i get this other video out 
It's gonna take me a couple days to get this one. And uh, if you're still here, you're here to learn. Hopefully, I know I've went over a ton of information. There is just a ton of stuff to do. I wasn't expect. I was expecting to do 15 minutes, and I ran into an hour trying to cover all this, and I barely scratched the surface. Once you start digging in, your research, your time, your everything, I can't tell you how many hours I have into it on just research alone on trying to do the right things. When sometimes that's good because I wanted, I want, I like to move forward quick. But a lot I should have spent if I could redo done some things. I should have spent more time with my original Echo 310 that I started off trying to carve with. I should have. Uh, I should have retuned that bad boy to run a higher chain speed with the with the bar that was already on it with the 3 8 low profile chain you know a regular bar and uh i should have used that for a long time you know i now if i had the skill level now that i did then i could have used that one for a lot longer time and got away with a whole lot more it's weird the carbon bar it did help it did help me with the smaller things the smaller details that i was wanting to do uh it's been useful if you had the money for it go Go, uh, you can try one out. I recommend doing it after you've gotten used to your regular chainsaw bar, you're, regular, you're using your chainsaw. Uh, don't jump into it just to get it because everybody else has it. That's not worth it. Uh, spend some time with what you got until it doesn't meet your needs anymore and you need to go something else. You can even find a bar that fits your own chainsaw, okay? You just swap back and forth on bars and just put your your equipment back on you know it may take you a few minutes to do but you'll get used to it it gives you a good chance to dig into your chainsaw and don't tear anything up and last thing like i say almost fair i'd say like i said you may not like my recommendations there's gonna be a hundred of them i am gonna tell you about bar oil real quick back to the websites jumping over here i will have my websites down i will have uh the resource pages that i found uh if you want to leave comments on here, please, please know, if you start leaving bad comments, I'm gonna get rid of you, okay? I don't wanna see cussing, curse words, anything like that. There's kids that look at this page, there's kids that look at this channel. I try to leave that stuff out, regardless if you know me personally or how I act personally. <laughs> I don't wanna bring that here, okay? I wanna keep this clean, I wanna keep this respectful. You have your thoughts, I have my thoughts. This is where I came from. Uh, everybody came from somewhere different on how they learned things i had to do it all myself and i may have went down the wrong direction but what i know now is that i'm not far off from where everybody else is okay we're all semi close together some people are staying with regular chainsaws more some people flip over to the uh, dime tip real quick you know the carving bars real quick uh there are all there's several different carving bars several different brands of chainsaws find what works for you find what's available to you uh the chains and converting over it's not as hard as what they make it seem like i wish you know they do need to make this a little bit easier but you know chainsaw carving is popular but it isn't popular enough to uh for sites to just dedicate everything to it the sites i'm going to give you they do have a good portion of their sites to ded dedicated to it so hopefully that will push you to be able to do more research. Uh, last thing. <laughs> I wanna talk about this real quick. Real quick, I'm not showing you brands. I'm not showing you brands, because it don't matter. Uh, bar oil for your chainsaw carving, if you do decide to start going for chainsaw carving, okay? I'm just gonna say that. Uh, I see this question a lot, and it does deal with the chains, bars, chainsaws, and all this aspect, is, uh, a lot of carvers they just use canola oil okay and there's so many different recommend recommendations i'm going to tell you what i what i do okay whether you agree with it or don't i'm not worried about it because this works for me that's just that's just how it is uh some people just use canola oil it's very thin uh you know some people like how it doesn't change the carving colors at all you know like if you had red bar oil and if it was going into the carving into your wood some people don't like uh, the way regular chainsaw oil, the viscosity of it, they don't like that. Uh, so you'll see a lot of people use canola oil. You'll see them uh, thin down their oils. That way they're not smoking out their chains and they're burning up their chains. If you're seeing that your chains are getting very hot or your bars are getting very hot because you're using the tip of your bars and stuff a whole lot more,
then uh, you may want to think about changing either bumping up the oilers on your chainsaw if that's available sometimes it's not uh, and that may be going to a maintenance issue if your oiler is clogged up with sawdust make sure that stays clean that's part of your maintenance stuff some people use canola oil just straight canola oil some people still use like a low viscosity which means a very thin chainsaw oil I'm gonna tell you what I found the most because I was confused as crap on chainsaw oil, chainsaw bar oil. Is uh, I seen some guys using canola, some using other things, some using motor oil, some using everything. Okay, the only truth I have found about any of the bar oils is use what works for you in your temperature zone, your range, your your elevation could determine almost how much how much bar or oil yours is going to the Picasso and how much comes out onto your chain. I take the cheapest chainsaw oil because I don't like to spend a lot of money on it as long as it seems of good good quality. You know, I find the cheapest stuff I can. And then I pour half of it into another jug. I'll take this one gallon. I'll take half a gallon out and then I'll pour one of these in there. And I may have just blown half your minds. One, I took I'm getting some of the additives and my theory, my theory alone, you may not agree, don't care if you don't agree. I've been using this stuff, you're doing it this way for a year. It's worked for me, it works in my saws. I'm not build, having build up problem. I'm not having smoking issues unless I'm going to town for 15 minutes, not letting off all that throttle, cutting into hardwoods, okay? My experience is that it works for me, may not work for you, know that. I take half this gallon out, pour it in another jug, pour one of these bad boys of canola on it canola oil in it it my theory is it thins down the viscosity of the chainsaw oil thins it down quite a bit so it's going to flow out better onto your bar onto your bar and on your chain but you're also getting some of those sticky additives from your bar oil that holds onto the chain that helps keep it lubricated longer yeah all right that could all be i don't know what that is that, that could all be fake. Nah, that sounds good in my head. All right, wrapping this video up. I'm gonna touch the screen one more time so I can see my pretty face. Crap. Ah. Dang, we're almost to an hour. I doubt I have any of you left. Hopefully you are. Hopefully you're wanting to learn. That's what these three parts are gonna be about. Yeah, that's what they're gonna be about. I gotta get to work. I have carving to do, but I've been thinking about this video forever. Like I said, my one year anniversary, I wanted to go over some things that helped me. Hopefully it gives you at least maybe pointed in the right direction. There's so many different directions to, to go in and you have to find your style, what you wanna do, do what you want to do, not what somebody pushes you to do. I see a lot of people get angry at each other on these forums and you have to have this saw. You have to have this bar. You don't have to have nothing, all right? There's been dudes carving out wood for ever. Cavemen have been doing it with sticks and stones. Cave women. Probably the cave women want something from the caveman, they made them make it. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> it's all those cave women. That's where it got started. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm about done. I've, all right. I really liked it. All right. Part two. Look down in the description. I'm gonna leave some resources. Big thing I was gonna tell you, I forgot. I'm gonna leave some channels down there and hopefully these guys like it, they appreciate it. I don't know any of them. Only thing I know is that I have commented on at least four out of the five of these channels and on their videos and I've watched them and I've watched them carve and I've watched them teach. They don't mind talking to people. They have good attitudes. They have good clean attitudes that you can show your kids. Uh, I, I've, I, I've enjoyed watching them. They're my preference. You may not like them, but I'm going to put their links down there. Uh, you can choose to check them out. They all have all, all of them have all kinds of videos. They all, they all seem to have good personalities that they want to help teach. They want to help you learn. They'll give you more pointers. Uh, hopefully I get to be in that spot one day where I can get up to their levels on just their uh, personality aspect towards people. They seem like really cool dudes. They've, I've left comments for them. They've all seemed to comment back. Uh, they, they, they try to stay, they're busy. They try to stay connected though. And uh, that's what I look for on trying to follow people on, uh, on, you know, on these channels and things. So check them out. 
Uh, you may like them, you may not. Sorry if you don't. They, they just kind of fit my groove on what I was looking for. There's many more out there, and I'm sorry if I don't have you. I think we all know how this YouTube alg algorithm and stuff, it's hard to get set up into a spot where you get noticed and things like that, which I'm, whether I do or not, did, I do this stuff just to kind of log down. Next year, five years from now, hopefully I can look at this video and be like, man, you were an idiot. <laughs> and these things didn't work out for you or they did work out for you. And what, what have you learned since then? We'll do a five year video. All right, part two, I'm gonna come out, try to do it within the next week. I'm sorry I'm not gonna have it done. This already lasted an hour. But uh, part two, we're gonna go over uh, tools and woods. You know, what tools I'm using, what woods, because I always see that question. Uh, hey, what tools do you got? Uh, what tools is everybody using? What's the first tools you would get? You know, things like that. Uh, what types of tools people use? And then uh, what type of woods are you using? Where do you get it? What are you looking for? I'll be going over that and that's going to be in part two. Hopefully it won't be as long as the video because I don't have as much for that as I do for chainsaws. And then part three, it will come out sometime after that. So make sure you subscribe. That way you can get a hold of these videos. That way you can see them. I'm hoping to have some good information. Hopefully you found some good stuff out here today. Subscribe, like, it helps me out. Throw your support towards me. You don't have to watch me if you don't want to. I just appreciate it. I, I'll tell you that right now. I would appreciate your support. <laughs> Part three is going to be on finishes, sealers, cracks, and you moving forward to, uh, you know, for those people that may be wanting to go further than just carving for yourself on some of the things that I've learned. And that's what part three will be about. All right. So uh, hopefully you got that. Hopefully you have a good day. I know I've blown, probably blown some of your minds. So some of you I didn't help. Some of you I may have. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it did something. Hopefully it did something. Hopefully you're still here. Alright, y'all have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Be nice to everybody. Help take care of people. If you're like, I already know a lot of this stuff. Be nice to me in these comments. Be nice to others. You never know who's watching. Uh, I'd really remember that when you do leave comments. Respect other people's comments. Respect other people's thought process everybody came from a different area that's all i'm going to say y'all have a good day i will see you later thanks for watching go to my channel check it out have a good day bye